we're going to welcome Annette Fibbs from DATCAP right now. She's going to give us an update from the 2015 Wisconsin Crop Diseases. And she has a bachelor's degree and master's degree in botany from the University of Würzburg, Germany. She's been working for DATCAP since 1992. Um, right now, she is currently the director of the plant industry laboratory, and her job is to diagnose plant diseases and nematodes on agricultural crops and ornamentals grown in Wisconsin. So welcome, Annette. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Um, and I'd like to ask you uh, to please hold your questions and fire till, till I'm done with my talk, since we're being taped. Um, no pressure. Um, Today I'll be talking about our survey results from last year, and if I'm going a little too fast or you want to revisit some of these things, uh, we have a website called pestsurveywisconsin.gov, and there's a lot of reports on there, and you can read it all at your leisure later. Um, and uh, so I'd like to focus on a number, a couple of groups of uh, pathogens, um, that we encounter during the year. We're looking mostly for exotic and new things, and new things is sort of loosely, within the last 10 years, still pretty new to us. Um, one of those groups are the Phytophthoras, or the Oomycetes of soybeans, uh, soybean viruses, corn diseases, and then we'll look ahead a little of what we might do next year. Mm. The Phytophthora subspecies, or Phytophthora, uh, all the oomycetes are water molds on soybeans. These are the organisms that are sort of like fungi, but not quite. Um, there are many different species of them. Uh, we've been looking for a number of years to identify how many species we have in Wisconsin. Often they also occur in combination with Pythium, which is a closely related group. And this is an image of a sample that we took a couple of years ago, where you can see the fine roots and the tap roots affected by both a Phytophthora and a Pythium, which you often find them in combination. Um, the Phytophthora soji is the one we're used to. It's more common in Wisconsin. All the red cross hatches, those are the counties we found this particular pathogen in in 2015. Um, every year we sample about 15 soybean fields in the vegetative growth stages and that takes, care, uh, takes place in the early, early in the year in June. Uh, but Phytophthora soji can affect any life stage. Uh, it can cause seed rot, pre or post emergence damping of stem lesions in the reproductive stages and uh, then you also have rotting lateral and tap roots and it causes very characteristic chocolate colored um, lesions on the stem. But we're finding more and more phytophthoras, and I want to talk to you a little bit about those. Um, as I said, we've been doing this survey for a number of years. Um, uh, we started in 2008 looking for phytophthora soji. Um, when, we, when I say we're looking for them, we're using methods that are based on genetic material. It's very difficult to identify these organisms just by morphology under the microscope. So we've been fortunate to have these uh, methods available now. And you can see that over the years, we've had quite a bit of Phytophthora soji. Those are the blue bars. Uh, last year, 49%. Uh, this year, or I should say in 2014, it was 49%. In 2015, 38%. So it's still a lot of Phytophthora soji. Um, when we started looking for Pythium, we realized, well, Pythium is just about everywhere and all the time. So there's a lot of Pythium and there's a lot of Pythium species, and we try to uh, speciate them, but um, that's still a lot more work that needs to be done there. Um, in 2012, we found a new species, Phytophthora sansomiana. Uh, 2014 and 15, we found two new species each year. So I'll be talking a little bit about those, but um, this is just an overview map of where we all found these uh, species in soybeans. And uh, you can 
look at this at your leisure later, but there's, there's a lot of different species. And the take home point is that we have more than just Pisoje now. We probably need to realize that Phytophthora sensumiana is a player in the disease component. Um, the other new species, we're not so sure that Phytophthora piney, Phytophthora species personae, that is so new that it doesn't even have an official name yet. Uh, Phytophthora inundata and Phytophthora iranica are also very new and we don't know a lot of these, a lot about these newer finds. Um, just to talk a little more about Phytophthora sansomiana, the interesting thing about that is that it has multiple hosts, Pisoja is only on soybeans, but sansomiana is also on corn. Um, on, and on weeds and alfalfa fields, and we also found it doing a totally unrelated survey on Christmas trees in, in uh, Abies or Noble firs, that's balsam, Fraser, and Douglas fir, and it does a really bad number on those trees, as you can see. So we combined the data from those two surveys, and we really can find it in quite a few areas of the state now in 15 counties. So that's a lot of counties that have it present. Now, it's not in every field, but it's certainly widely distributed. Um, some of the newer things are quite exciting to look at under the, under the microscope, as you can see. It's sort of like a space station, it looks like. Um, so these are really fun to look at, but you need the genetic testing to actually identify them. Um, the reason I grow them out and I'm showing you these pictures is because, well, the pictures are much nicer than a picture of a pipetter on the tubes. Boring. So, um, and also I grow them out because I want to share them with researchers that can use them in their research to find out more about them. So this particular one we found this year in Buffalo County, and it's really known to affect uh, hardwood trees, shrubs, um, and, and not so much soybeans. Um, that's a new one. And But a lot of these new species that we find have in common that they are on wet and flooded soils. Um, the finds that I have are, are homologous with finds from Europe and South America. Um, that doesn't mean they're brand new here. We have new methods and they may have been here for a while, but it's sort of uh, an effect of having new tools. So there's a lot more we need to learn about them. But n a lot of what these new ones have in common is that, that they like flooded soils and they thrive in these flooded soils. So when we have flooding in soybeans and wet years, that might be a reason we start to find them. Another commonality of these new uh, species is that they're always in, often in combination with Phytophthora soje or Phytophthora sansomiana. So that might indicate that they're uh, more opportunists, but we really don't know that. The Phytophthora iranica has been known uh, since 71 from Iran, and we found it in Lafayette County in 2015. And those hosts are eggplant, potato, tomato, and sugar beets, the more solanaceous crops. Yeah, there's a lot of research going on on this group of fungi, so there's uh, an explosion of taxonomy and species. Um, the next one that we found last year is actually interesting also for our nursery growers because it causes a lot of issues with rhododendron production. I find it particularly on nursery stock that's imported from other states. Uh, the old name was Plurivora citricola. So for some of you phytophthorologists, you might recognize those names. Uh, it also survives and actually thrives really well in reservoirs and rivers. So if you're irrigating from rivers and ponds, that's a um, thought you should have to be cautious because you might be introducing more than water when you do that. Um, this one was found in Eau Claire together with Sansomiana. And the last one in Winnebago County from 2014, Personi. We don't know any of the hosts. There's only been two reports um, in the US, and uh, originally it was found in Australia. So as I said, um, I collect these things, and I send them to Damon Smith at the UW and many other people collections so they can study them further and find out which one we really have to look out for. Um, Let's switch to soybean viruses a little bit. Uh, we've been doing a survey on soybeans during the summer 
in combination with our soybean aphid survey since 2003, actually before that, I think, but in 2003 we found soybean dwarf virus. Uh, I've been tracking that for a number of years, and there's actually, if you can see sort of the red bars, you see an increase in um, detections over the years. Uh, soybean vein necrosis virus made a big splash in 2012. It was a uh, new discovery. Uh, 2013, we still find a lot, and now it's slowed down a little bit. We also look for a alfalfa mosaic virus. It's kind of the old standby, something that's seed and um, aphid transmitted, and what we've seen over the years. A um, little uptick last year on that one, too. And this is a map of where we found these different viruses in the state. So it's basically where soybeans are grown. Uh, six or 12 percent of the fields were infected with alfalfa mosaic virus. Uh, soybean dwarf, dwarf virus, 12 percent. Soybean vein necrosis virus, 6 percent. So that's significantly down. Um, and to understand soybean vein necrosis virus, we need to know that it's a TOSP virus transmitted by thrips. And the thrips count was down this year, too. So if you have no thrips, you have less virus because there is no thrips to transmit the virus. Um, it was first detected in Tennessee in 2008, and it was our most common virus in 2012 and 13. So it's interesting to see how these uh, populations ebb and flow. And in the field, this is one that's pretty easy to ID, or at least to spot, because it has these brown necrotic lesions along the veins and yellowing, and so it's something to look out for. Soybean dwarf virus, as I said, we found in 2003. We know that there's a reservoir in clover, so they probably come from there. Um, it's a problem in Japan, but it never has any significant effect in Wisconsin, as far as we know. Um, it is transmitted by the soybean aphids, which are persistently feeding aphids. And um, we know that in Wisconsin we have dwarfing strain and yellowing strain, but mostly dwarfing strain. Um, there's actually a very complicated uh, story of different strains of this virus on different hosts. There are up to 50 hosts. Um, but I think our soybeans are, may not be as susceptible. So, so far, no problem with that. Uh, shift gears a little bit to soybean diseases, so I, so Asian soybean rust. Um, was also not detected in Wisconsin. We do a lot of that. We look for exotic stuff and then we're happy when we don't find it. So this one we didn't find in Wisconsin, and but it made it as far north as central Illinois, but by that time it was November, so it, it's really not a big deal at that point anymore. Um, it spread throughout the United States. About 10 states were affected. Um, there's a list there and there's also an IPM pipe pipeline website where you can track this. Um, there's a few look-alike uh, species or uh, pathogens on soybeans, like septaria brown stuff spot. So if you see something suspicious, please submit it to an extension office or UW to have it checked out. Another one we want to keep tabs on is frog, frog eye leaf spot um, that we know it goes back to at least 2000 when we had a lot of fields infected, but in the last couple of years we really haven't seen it. But that leaves those nice, well, frog eye leaf, frog eye shaped spots on the leaf, so that's also something you can spot fairly easily in the field. And on to corn diseases. Um, we inspect corn for a phytosanitary certification, so this is a um, service that DATCAP offers. Um, in 2015, we inspected 53 counties, um, no, 53 fields in six counties, uh, 39 fields. That's not a huge number. There's a lot of corn in Wisconsin. You know that. Um, so this is kind of a spot check of what goes on. And we take those samples and we test it for everything just to see what might be out there. We haven't found Stewart's will since 2010, which is really good. That's a regulatory concern, although it's mostly deregulated now. Canada doesn't check for it anymore. Goss's will uh, was up this year. Um, it's a little bit skewed. I wouldn't take, uh, put too much emphasis on those numbers uh, because of how, how biased the survey is based on what inspection needs 
require. But we found it in Adams, Dane, Eau Claire, and Rock County, so that's four counties. And it's been more frequent since 2010. So those are two bacterial diseases that are sometimes a little hard to ID. Um, we check for some viruses too, maize chlor chlorotic model virus. Um, that was one that was of concern in combination with podivirus can cause a serious disease. It's in South America, Hawaii, not in Wisconsin, but so those are the kind of exotic things we look for. Uh, no high plains virus either. Um, we find a few of the maize dwarf mosaic virus, or now we call it sugarcane mosaic virus, and but those are usually from the same spots, so there are some lines that are infected. Um, in terms of the real fungal diseases, gray leaf spot was an 18% of the samples I examined. Uh, northern corn leaf blight in 60% of the samples. Um, it's always fairly common, but that was uh, quite a bit. And then the very common common rust, aptly named, there's a lot of that. And I checked every sample to make sure it's not southern rust, and I didn't see any southern rust. Um, it may be out there, but we didn't find it. Um, if you have any inspection needs for seed field inspections, those are done during the growing season, uh, please contact Alan Netsky at the office or check out our website. We do inspections on not just corn, but bean, onions, pepper, tomato, soybean, anything you can grow in Wisconsin, we'll, we'll check. Um, and just looking ahead a bit, what are we going to do in 2016? Um, uh, going back to 2015, our neighbor states, Illinois and Indiana, found tar spot on corn. That was fairly exciting, new disease on corn. We didn't see it on our inspections or during the pest survey, um, but it might be out there. So we're going to look for that again next year. We're also in the process of doing a, a survey for cereal cyst nematodes on corn and wheat for exotic nematodes, so we'll be reporting on that next year. And with that, I'll thank you. And I'd like to acknowledge my uh, collaborators in the lab, Susan Nuloff, and in the field, Adrian Barda, and all our um, skilled professionals that bring in the samples and keep an eye out, and our funding agency, the USDA APHIS and DATCAP. Okay. Thank you.